Hey, what's up, Social9? I'm just here at home today, working from home, and I thought I'd just give you guys a little video uh, to help you with this next assignment. So last week I had you all working on spectrums. We were talking about political or social spectrums. So we weren't talking as much about the economy, but we were talking more about how open people were to the idea of change. So if you, if you remember, if you are more left-wing, you are in favor of more change and more progress. Um, and if you are right-wing, you are more in favor of keeping things the same. So I hope that you all kind of understand that. Today, we're going to be talking more specifically about the economy. And we have to create another, uh, another spectrum here. We don't call it a political spectrum. We actually call it an economic spectrum. And what's interesting is often, if you are right-wing on a political spectrum, you are also right-wing on an economic spectrum. And often, if you are more left-wing on the political spectrum and you're more in favor of change, you're often more left-wing on the economic spectrum. Now, this isn't always the case, but it's usually the case. And so that's what I'm going to be teaching you. Once we get to grade 12 and we go deeper into uh, economics and politics, we'll talk about exceptions to the rule. So I'm going to try this on a piece of paper. I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but I don't, I don't have my whiteboard, but we'll, we'll do our best. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little spectrum here. And we've already talked about this one. This is the political the political spectrum. Okay, and to be more to be more right wing is often to be more conservative. So conservative just the word simply means that you don't feel like the system is broken, therefore it doesn't really need fixing. And so you generally like to keep things somewhat the same. Um, it's not that you're necessarily closed minded, but you are um, pretty happy with the way things are, and you think that the way things that the way that things have been done in the past um, are working or are sufficient. Okay. And if you are on the right, or sorry, if you're on the left, you know I get that confused sometimes. You are more liberal, meaning that you think that the system that we have um, has flaws and needs some change. Okay, so in a sense, um, when we talk about, so it's the political spectrum, when we talk about the economic spectrum, we are also going to draw a left to right wing spectrum. So if you're on the right, you actually believe that one of the things about being conservative is that historically in Canada and the United States and other Western countries, People have taken like a lot of responsibility for themselves and that, that the way in which we are free um, and the way that, that things are good is when people act in their own interest and they try to be kind of like self-sufficient. Okay, so we call this individualist. So the idea here is that the best way that our economy should run is if people try to act in their own interest, right? And so what that means is that our economy should function where people start their own businesses, um, people work towards trying to uh, kind of make the best um, for themselves. They try to um, provide for themselves. They don't really need help from other people. And that the more that they're given freedom to do that, the more successful that they can become. So kind of like that idea of like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the American dream, but you can, you know, come to America and no one will kind of get in your way and you have the freedom to kind of do what you want and, and try to make a living and you can make as much money as you want and be as successful as you want if you work hard enough. So that's kind of what an individualist believes. They believe that we can take care of ourselves. We don't need help from other people um, necessarily and especially and especially we don't need help from the government. So we need to have a limited government. So individualists, it's not that they hate the government, it's just that they don't think the government is very good at running the economy. 
They believe that individuals acting in their own interest will actually run the economy better. So essentially the role of government then would be to, uh, it, the only purpose that government would serve would be that it helps to make sure that, that uh, my behavior as an individual doesn't negatively affect the behavior of somebody else as an individual. So the government would be there, for example, if I started a business, right, it would be there to stop me uh, from maybe stealing or taking property from somebody else and their rights to, uh, to kind of act in their own self-interest. So the government would stop me from killing somebody else or from stealing from someone else or uh, maybe using my land in a way that hurt somebody else. Like, for, for example, what if I had a business that, I don't know, maybe I was like a, I, I was a steel factory and I dumped all of my dirty, nasty pollution and, and stuff into the water and it flowed downstream uh, to a, I don't know, a bottling plant for, uh, for bottled water, right? The government would step in and say, well, your actions and you kind of fulfilling your own rights are uh, taking away the, the rights of somebody else to make a living. So that would be the role of government. But other than that, the government kind of needs to stay out of the economy. So this, uh, this came from a famous philosopher by the name of Adam Smith. And essentially what Adam Smith said, give me a second, my uh, alarm is going off in my house right now. Hey, Google, turn it off. Isn't that amazing? Technology. Okay, so this famous philosopher, Adam Smith, he said, and you guys are going to need to know a ton about him, but he basically said, that when we act in our own self-interest, we aren't necessarily trying to help other people out, but when we try to do our very best and act in our own interest, we end up inadvertently, meaning not on purpose, we, we inadvertently benefit everybody else. And so essentially think about it like this. So Steve Jobs came up with the idea of the iPhone. Now, did he do that because he's a really nice guy and wanted to make your lives better? Well, not really. He came up with the iPhone because he wanted to be unbelievably rich and famous. But has your life benefited from the iPhone? Well, I think a lot of you know that smart technology and phones kind of started with Apple. And it's made a lot of people's lives a lot simpler. Um, maybe in some cases more complicated. But I think generally it's helped bit other businesses prosper um, and, and so forth. So everybody acting in their own interest everybody acting as an individualist, doing what's best for them, right, uh, will end up making the whole system work better, um, okay? Now, you can probably think of some negative things with that too, but we're going to talk about that later. But we're going to move over to the collectivist side. So, to be a collective or a collectivist This means that you believe that it's important that sometimes we need to think about the needs of the group, right? Even sometimes more than the needs of the individual. Sometimes individuals and their ability to act in their own, in, own interest can be sacrificed in, uh, for the good of the group, okay? And the best way to do that and to make sure that everybody has some sort of level of goodness in their lives, we need the government to step in and create greater equality. So we believe in more government. More government. So let's look at this. Uh, let's look at an example of this to help you guys understand this. So, so let's talk about the COVID-19 epidemic that's go or a pandemic that's going on right now. So an, individ an individual would say, well, it should be your responsibility as a business owner, as an individual to prepare for a rainy day. So if something bad happens, like a tragedy, like the COVID-19 and businesses are shutting down and the economy is not functioning the way it maybe, it maybe should or we're not making as much money, then we should be 
prepared for that. We should have saved for a rainy day. It's not, it's not the government's fault or anybody else's fault if you went into high levels of debt and didn't prepare yourselves. You should, if you're making money, you should save money, right? A collector should say, well, that people aren't necessarily able to do that all the time. There are people that are really disadvantaged in life and this situation is going to be bad for everybody. And so we need the government to actually step in and, uh, and begin to help the economy get back up on its feet, um, that the individual is not able to do that. And so how does, it, how does it do that? Well, it could do things like what's going on right now where the government's creating what are called like stimulus packages where they're uh, making sure that employers can pay their employees or uh, they're giving more money uh, in tax exemptions to families with children or uh, they're helping businesses out by you know, letting them, um, I don't know, I'm just trying to think, like letting them uh, have an extra a couple of months to pay their taxes from last year. There's a bunch of things that our government has done. It has stepped in and it's helping the collective for the collective good. Okay, so the collective means that the government steps in and tries to make things more equal for everyone. An individualist says that the government, in order for us to be equal, the government needs to get out of the economy and let us act on our own. So both sides actually believe believe very much in the idea of freedom and equality of opportunity. It's just that individuals believe that equality of opportunity is given when we are more free from the government and collectives believe that we are more uh, free and equal when the government steps in and provides us help and makes things equal for all of us. So your assignment today, and you're going to see this spectrum a lot more, and we're going to we're going to get into this in more and more detail. But your job today is you guys are going to be um, analyzing a bunch of different examples and you're going to be deciding whether those examples are more collectivist or if they're more individualist. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'm going to say this one more time. Often, not always, remember, it's not always. Often, if you are more collective, you are often more liberal on the political spectrum. And often if you are more individualist and you believe in more limited government, you are more conservative on this economic scale, sorry, on the political scale. And that, so I actually lied. I'm, I'm going to say one more thing um, that will help you with this assignment. So to be more individualist in the economy, another word that we often use for this is that you are more capitalist. So I've written that right there, capitalist. And what that essentially means is that um, it kind of means that everybody has the equal opportunity to gain capital or wealth and that it is by gaining that capital or that wealth that we gain access to goods and services. So if I want to buy a new car or a new house or I want to buy groceries, that doesn't come from the collective group. The government doesn't give me the money or ability to do that. Me working hard and earning an income allows me, like the harder I work and the more I, I make as an income, the more able I am, uh, I am to gain access to goods and services. So if I choose not to work and I choose not to do my best as an individual, then I will have less capital and therefore I won't be able to get access as much to goods and services. Okay, so me getting access to things, right, is dependent on my ability to work for them. When we go to the collective side, we often refer to this as more socialist. If we go really extreme, you've probably heard the word communist, but we're not going to talk about that now. It, very extreme is called communist, um, but sometimes we call it either socialist or we refer to this as a planned economy. And what that means, a planned or a socialist economy, means that we acknowledge or that a socialist economy acknowledges that sometimes people don't have access to capital because they're disadvantaged. They don't have access to money or wealth because they're disadvantaged. Maybe they're born with a disability or maybe they're born into poverty or maybe they just 
don't have as much opportunity. And so there are times when the government needs to step in and ensure that everybody is getting a fair share of goods and resources, right? So you don't, you don't necessarily get goods and resources because you work harder for them. Um, you get goods and services by being a human being and living in that society. So the belief is that all people need to be more equal and that equality is, can be given to us through the government. So like an example of that, and, and I'm going to say that some, some uh, governments like Canada, we have aspects of the collective and aspects of, of the capitalist. And that's why we have something in the middle that's called a mixed economy. Which tries to find kind of a balance between the two. So I'll give you guys an example of this. When we talk about universal health care in Canada, if you work harder, you don't get more health care. Right? Everybody gets health care because they're citizens. So that would be more socialist. Right? But in Canada, if you want to get a new car or a nice home or uh, you know, lots of groceries in your fridge, that doesn't come by the government giving you those things. That comes by you working hard for them. Right? And so we have a combination of socialism and capitalism in Canada that makes our economy more of a mixed economy. Right. And you can have like, so this may be, maybe Canada would be kind of here. And we have other countries like the United States that are maybe more capitalist than they are socialist. Right. So we kind of put them somewhere in between. And then we have some countries like, uh, like Sweden that is actually more socialist than they are capitalist, but they're not purely socialist. They're somewhere in between. And so I want you guys to think of the kind of the, the, the spectrum this way. Anyway, so I think that that should do for today. Um, I hope that that made sense to all of you. If it didn't, please call me, text me, leave a message on Google Classroom. The kids are yelling in the background. Um, just want to know, I just wanted you all to know that I miss you. Um, I, I became a teacher because I like spending time with kids, uh, not sitting at my computer and talking to you virtually. So this is, uh, this is difficult for all of us, uh, but we'll get through it together. Let's try your best. Um, peace. See you next time.